Anastasia and her brother, the Russians, are selling the nukes so they can have enough money to do whatever the hell they want. Yet they're shown with massive duffel bags full of cash, and they apparently want to get back at the USA for killing their parents. So why sell the nuke? Why not blow it up themselves? And wouldn't procuring the nuke in the first place cost them a small fortune? Why is Anastasia so anti-USA if she was raised here? And why was she raised here? It's been too long since I last watched this. Someone please explain it to me in the comments. So now Winters is saying that Anastasia's had combat training her whole life. So was she raised in the USA or not? She did not have time to free the Russians from the freezer. No way. McKnight and Trunk found her mere seconds after she stabbed that bad guy. And what was the bull's penis that old cauliflower ear was looking at when he said they had a way out? Haggerty and his missus have won big coin on the roulette wheel. Three stacks of 20 chips, plus another 10 or so on top. A total of 70 chips. Let's assume they're $1 chips at 35 to 1 for a straight up win. That would be a payout of $2,450. That's not exactly huge. You'd need 10 times that amount to lose your mind. I mean, even people watching are losing their mind. It must have been $100 chips. That's a $7,000 bet. Wowee. The CIA calls and the team is off the mission. Even though there's only four of the original six with them. They don't seem too phased about Paul and Haggerty being missing. Agent Ferguson now has the case. So they can all chill and get smashed again. Gomez, for some reason, thinks she's the only Hispanic and calls Ferguson a clown to his face in Spanish. He replies that he's not laughing. So we've established that he can speak Spanish. Will this pay off? Basically, everyone in the show who ever experienced an injury has arrived at the same emergency ward at the same time, including a guy with a champagne bottle up his bum. He must be an amateur, though, because it was neck first. So Maya's in there, and the nurse gives us a nice exposition dump that Maya got shot through and through and just needs to sleep it off. Wowee! How lucky is that? She got shot twice and it's passed right through her and done no damage. The only issue is now she's morphined up to her eyeballs and having sexy dreams about McKnight. In her drugged up stupor she gets her kid off, which is okay I suppose. She's not really my type. But Anastasia is there in her dream and basically explains the plot to her. Is this supposed to be for people who are joining us in episode 7? I said at the time, why is she unencrypting this rando's tablet? Maya unlocked Lana's iPad so she can get on TikTok, so I expect there'll be a leak now. But I also said, somehow Vlad knew he was being tracked and stuffed his phone into the Uggo's pocket so McKnight and Winters crashed Jeff's love fest instead. Don't know how he knew. So they had me there. Thankfully, that didn't factor into my conclusion. <laughs> the fake fight over the iPad with the nurse. She would have zero body strength after being shot. She would be dopey as anything after being drugged up. Then the nurse lets go of the tablet, but Maya still shakes it back and forth like she's in a fake tug of war. Why hasn't the CIA begun evacuating the city? They could fake a chemical spill or something. Anastasia organizes with Ferguson to do the exchange. Her brother for the nuke. But it's only one hour before detonation. Like I said, evacuate. But she's sending her goons into the tunnels. There's tunnels under Las Vegas? I guess so. For some reason, Paul's goblin is now spitting psychobabble at him. Is this goblin meant to be tormenting him or helping him? I guess whatever suits the plot. But Paul does break free from the zip ties. Probably the most unrealistic thing I've seen in the show yet. Those things will cut you to the bone before they let you go. Who is the cop that pulls up? He looks familiar. Basically, he's a nobody. I think I had Lou Ferrigno and Eric Estrada crossed in my mind. So Paul now has a cop car. Trunk is doing the going into too much detail about food thing again, while pretending an ice cube is food. Red Dwarf did it better, and at least they had the payoff that it was dog food he was eating. Are you telling me that with all this booze and drugs lying around, there's no food? Not even a packet of chips? Come on now. So Maya found out who Cauliflower Ear met at the Four Queens Casino. Guga Foods. How did she find this out? Anyway, Guga can get you in or out of Vegas. I assume that means internationally, because you can just drive in. Well, they try to call Ferguson, but he doesn't want additional info on the case for some reason, so he hangs up on them. Now they go into the airport to investigate the plane, but they leave just as the food arrives. Like, literally, the food was waiting off screen and entered the frame as the elevator door closes. What are the odds? Haggerty and his missus are only now having the talk about surnames, kids, etc. Oopsies. How will this come into play for the rest of the season besides an immediate divorce? And of course, he'll have to give her all the winnings in the settlement so everything ends up back at square one. Anastasia has some hired goons with a personal arsenal. 
but she wants hand to hand only. So two guys are meant to help her and her team deal with the cops. How exactly? Uh oh, Agent Ferguson called Anastasia a bitch. And with modern script writing, we can't have that happening. He may as well have killed a dog. Dead man walking. The team arrive at the airport and they have had time to get Maya some clothes, but no food. The guard won't let them in and Trunk tries to flex but faints due to low blood sugar. Either he needs food or this is going to keep happening. If he exerts himself one more time without fainting or eating, this show is cactus. So the FBI send in some dudes, but they just happen to be stationed nearby. Not sus at all. Trunk wakes up and says that his stomach may be empty, but his heart is full. Gomez says that is some gay shit. I didn't realize the good guys were allowed to talk like that. Is Gomez a double agent? The FBI says the plane is clean, but Gomez says that the sweep was too fast. Very sus. But they say it's just a normal Vegas cash transport plane. Is that a thing? Now the gang are under arrest and being transported by paddy wagon. What are the odds that Haggerty having a meltdown on the road is what would hold the transport carrying Kozlov? Two to one at least. Somehow Maya managed to keep her iPad on a person while being arrested and she has access to check if the pilot of the plane is above board, even though they've all been burn protocoled. Luckily, the prisoner transport carrying the team is driving right past the handover site. Paul gets them out of the paddy wagon. Why not? He's got the cop car. He heard it over the radio. Sure. After all the other coincidences are meant to swallow, add it to the pile. So they break into the mobile command center and grab guns, radios, etc. And the people in there just let them. Sure, random strangers, take our guns. We won't do anything. Uh, no. Show. Stop, show. Paul does a Texas two-step in front of the camera, and not two steps behind him is his daughter and her boyfriend. Come on. What's with the crazy coincidences? Just as the handover is about to go ahead, the flame plies overhead and drops something. It's got a parachute. And kaboom, it explodes. It's an exploding, parachuting crate of money. Like the FBI said, standard Vegas money plane stuff. Now people are everywhere grabbing free cash monies. I'm not transfixed by this woman at the front. <laughs> the stuntman's shoulders are way wider than the helmet, yet Anastasia's helmet is just as wide as her shoulders. Kozlov makes a run for the bike, but Ferguson has him in his sights. Why didn't he shoot him earlier? I'll never know. But Anastasia pulls a gun and shoots him through the forehead. Boom! Headshot! But having already watched almost seven episodes of this show, and Marvel's Echo, I know better than to assume someone being shot in the head is a death sentence. Kozlov, instead of getting on the bike and riding off, grabs Ferguson's gun and holds up McKnight so he can monologue. Winters shoots him dead. Anastasia gets out of there on the bike, but not before attaching the nuke to a handy hook that the bike has built into it. Nice and convenient. I have to give this episode another four. I can't take anything that happens in this series seriously anymore. A very sloppily written episode, this one. Again, and I know I sound like a broken record, but so many coincidences. Everyone arriving at the hospital at the same time. Maya hallucinating that Anastasia was a Russian. The team leaving just as Trunk's food arrives. Haggerty having a meltdown right where the handover was happening. The police transport that had the team driving right by the handover point. Paul having a stolen police car so he heard the arrest over the radio. Paul walking within two feet of his daughter. Just lazy writing. Maya being perfectly fine after being shot twice in the torso? She should have been fighting off infection. The bad guy's plan relying purely on the ineptitude of the FBI. If those two guys had checked that plane to see the money cube had a parachute, they could have avoided most of this. And why were the bad guys in the tunnels? They were in the tunnels to set up bombs to kill the police who were only in there to catch the bad guys who were in the tunnels. So we have one episode left. We need to get the bomb, disarm it. So we need Haggerty. Paul needs to find his daughter and her boyfriend. Speaking of, he seemed to be just as cool with Paul as he was in his hallucination. We also need to get Anastasia. She won't be killed. They've arrested nobody so far. I bet you anything that they'll arrest her and not kill her. McKnight will get shot and Winters will have to save him, thereby proving she's ready to return to the field. We shall see. Thanks for watching. If you like what you saw, please consider subscribing. I release reviews occasionally when time allows, and a thumbs up would be a big motivator for further reviews. If you didn't like it, feel free to leave a thumbs down and let me know how I can improve in the comments below. Anyway, I'm Mixie, thanks for your time, and have a good one.